Arvind Vijay Mohan, he's an authority in the Indian art industry. He is the founder of Artry. Uh, he's done numerous sessions about investing in art and has been published extensively in the Economic Times, Outlook, Business Standard, Financial Express, and other publications. Over the last 19 years, he has worked with ultra high net worth individual, high net worth clients, such as some of you who are ultra high net worth clients, to create wealth through investing in art. So with that, uh, Arvind, I hand over to you for the next 30, 40 minutes about uh, taking us through investing in art. Thank you very much. Thank you, Srivats. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to begin with. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, Srivats, congratulations on pulling this off. This looks spectacular. Um, it has a private advisory that offered valuation, private sales, and diligence services. Uh, what, we, what we stood for was basically making sure that people don't make mistakes when they buy art. A lot of people will go in and want to buy a picture by Hussein or Souza or Raza or Tayyab uh, and they will buy an average picture and they'll overpay for it. Now that is where you make a mistake and when you're spending that kind of money, chances are you're keeping an eye on what the re potential return would be. You know, if I were to sort of take stock of the few hundred pictures that we have sold over the past 20 years uh, in the high value category, uh, maybe only about three or four have come up for resale. There are very few works that come up for resale but when you see uh, numbers sort of not qualify for what you were promised at the outset, you're, you're disillusioned. Uh, and, then, and then the kind of support that came into the market in the mid 2000s because art was seen as a, lucrat as a lucrative sort of line of uh, investment, that was wiped out in the years that followed. It's only now that we're seeing an enthusiasm sort of return to the market, particularly from the contemporary side. What is, uh, you know, uh, a differentiator for Artry India is we from the very outset uh, took a data-based approach. So the first part is academic, that you understand what makes this artist important. Why is his practice worth collecting? You know, is there something special about it that is unique that makes him worthy of collecting? And having answered that, uh, we look at the financial side of the business. So, you know, if someone is saying that this work is worth, let's say, a crore and a half, how is it that you've arrived at that amount? You know, how is it that the gallery is asking for that amount? So the approach that we took was now it's taken form in, a, in a, an independent uh, subsidiary company called Indian Art Investor, where we track the careers of 970 some Indian artists. We have every single artwork sold in the public domain over the past uh, 30 and counting years, um, uh, from 1987 to be precise, with us. So we've got a lakh and a half sales records, which give you a very clear sense of exactly how this market has grown. You know, what has uh, what has been the movement for the market at large? And within that, what is the practice of each artist amounted to? Which artist is growing? Which one is falling? So let's say you look at Hussein. Uh, of all the works that have sold, which is the most popular subject? What's the most popular size? What's the most popular color? We can answer those with a very high degree of uh, clarity and precision because we've got all this data with us. Now, to begin with, um, you know, the question that's often asked is, is uh, art in the first place an asset? And if it is, is it resilient? To go through that, we are going to look at the sales over the past uh, 20 years. This is this is auction data. So if you look at if you look at the very outset, um, you know, the early part of the 2000s, right up till about 2003-4, were fairly were fairly slow. But in 2003, we breached the million dollar mark for the first time, and that really gets the interest of the market going. Everyone suddenly wants to understand how you know a piece of cloth with some paint slapped on it can start achieving these kind of numbers and what we see over the, proceed, uh, over, the, over the next couple of years is a skyrocketing graph line. You know, the number of works being traded as well as the turnover. The turnover, for instance, if you look at 07, 08, and 08, 09, uh, are, are alarming by any measure, you know, and with very little merit. Nobody really understood this. One of the reasons was the emergence of the art fund. I'll speak about that as we go, uh, in particular context with the contemporary market. but. I don't know if, if all of you all were following the markets at this point, but in 2008, we ran into one of the biggest recessions the world has ever seen. And what you have is a, is a meltdown. So in 2009-10, you have the lowest to the lowest that the Indian art market witnesses. After that, it sort of stumbles forward, finds its feet somewhere along the way, 
and the year prior, so if you look at the lower tiers in the past three years, has pushed us into creating verticals where we're starting to uh, consider how to bring some of our uh, expertise into this domain as well. I, I spoke of Indian Art Investor. One of the properties that we run there is called Repeat Sales, which references every single artwork that has ever sold more than once. You know, usually, usually the comparisons aren't clear because you're, you're sort of comparing an apple with an orange. But uh, a repeat sale allows you to have a very clear apple to apple comparison because it shows the same work trading over a period of time. So if you look at a low investment with a very short holding period, uh, you know, one of these instances that I'm putting out for your reference here, this is a picture by Shakti Barman, which, uh, which sold for the first time in 2016 for 8 lakh rupees. Uh, four years in, I mean, it was a little under four years, it sold at 19 lakhs, which gives a return of about 23 and a half odd percent over these uh, three years. If you look at a long-term holding, now typically one of the first things that we tell anyone who's coming in to buy art and buy art seriously is forget about investment unless you're spending a very, very rich sum. And the second thing is buy for your grandchild. Don't buy for any other reason. Enjoy during your time. Hopefully your children also will inherit your uh, purpose and, and love. But it will be your grandchildren who will really benefit. You know, if you see the five most expensive pictures that were sold, they were bought 40, 50 years back by people who were long gone. Uh, for you know, for 40,000, 50,000, 60,000 rupees, and I'm now selling for 40 to 50 crores. So this particular picture by Gulam Muhammad Sheikh sold in 1995 at a very important auction for 2.7 lakh rupees. It sold earlier this year for 15.6 crores. Four years. This is a Tayyab Mehta. It sold for 57 lakhs in 2003. The reason we are referencing 2003 is because by now the market had already picked up favor. People were already buying. There was a lot of interest. Um, so 57 lakhs. A lot of people will say, yeah, pagal ho gaya. why are you spending this kind of money on art? But if you consider the investment uh, return on this, it's sold in 2024, 8.2 crores, which conservatively is about 17 odd percent. Uh, the key is always to identify the right artist and the right picture painted during an important period in his lifetime. Now I'm going to bring repeat sales into the global context. If you consider where the international art, art market is presently, it's got about, I would say, about a three-decade head start on India. So where we are presently, you know, in 2022, the Western art market was in the 1990s. So between 92 to 95 is exactly where the Indian art market is presently. Um, I'm starting with an artist called Philip Gouston. Philip Gouston is a, is a contemporary Western painter. In 1991, this particular work sold for five lakhs. These are all auction figures. They're all coming from the public domain. In 2017, this work sold for 42 crores which is about 30 odd percent return over the 25 years that it was held. One of the raging champions of the contemporary market, uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, very important picture of Jim Crow who was an advocate for, for social rights. In 1992, this particular picture sold for 42 lakhs. In 2017, it sold for 112 crores, which is a return of about 25 percent over the 25 years that it was held. Um, a slightly senior painter. So this is the equivalent of a modernist. Uh, Amadio Modigliani, reclining nude, very, very important uh, painting. As you'd notice, by you know, 2003, which is 10 years hence, so that's like me saying 2033, you know, for us to consider where we will be. This picture sold for 125 crores then. 2018, it sold for 1,060 crores. So, you know, numbers that are baffling to us today will be a reality. If, if 10 years ago I had referenced a, a, a figure of 40 crores for an artwork, a lot of you all might have questioned me, so, you know, it won't happen. Uh, one of the first questions I was asked when I had embarked on this journey of trying to convince people to spend money on art with a financial perspective was how expensive do you think Indian art will be uh, in 10 years? And I, you know, even with the farthest of insights, the numbers were very, very limited. Right now I have a lakh and a half records to back me up, but back then we had only about 8,000 records. Uh, back then, the farthest I could think was 25 crores, you know, but we've already gone past that. We've, in the private markets, we have breached the auction high of 40 crores, and this is something that decade upon decade will continue to roll. It's not, it's not rocket science, it's just an economic cycle that's playing out. So, as you can see, the CAGR drops, the compounded growth drops to about 12.5% over the 15 years that it was held. These three instances are from about 60 or 1,000 repeat sales, which are only derived from the post-war and contemporary sales category. That, that is the most promising sales category in the international art market. Uh, post-war and contemporary auction, which is conducted usually six times a year, will draw anywhere between 600 million to a billion dollars in one night of transactions. Uh, the key is just trying to understand what to pick. If you look at the global art market now in 2020, uh, 
know, the turnover was $50 billion. 2021, it went up to $65 billion. That's a jump of 19%. If you look at just the Indian auction market, we're not talking about private sales here. The market went from 21 to 22. It went from 890 crores to 1,000 crores, which is a 16% increase. So even the numbers sort of merit this kind of dynamic growth that we're seeing across the board. The current perspective is they challenged the norm of what art was because their patronage was European. And they started saying they're Indians and we need to unravel what it means to be Indian. You know, that's why they're championed. Uh, they were followed by the moderns, who were young boys and girls in 19, the 1940s when India suddenly became independent. So what does it mean to be an Indian as, uh, you know, a part of the free world? That was something that a lot of these artists embarked upon. And being sort of, you know, thinkers who weren't driven by uh, the seduction of art. Like today, art is, is fancy. You get to fly first class, you, 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 know, you can travel the world, you can have the trappings of a good life. But back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, there was no one buying art. So these are people whose lives were dedicated to the pursuit of this field that they, that they were just devoted to. So the moderns were around from the 1940s till the turn of the century. And from the mid-1990s, you have the emergence of the contemporary artists, so the senior contemporary. What you're going to see on display here are the younger contemporaries. Above them is a bracket that started sort of, you know, showing promise somewhere in the mid-1990s. So Subodh, Bharti, Ato, Lanju, those who have gone and shaken the sort of international, uh, you know, uh, markets, they're the ones who emerged on the scene at that time. So the moderns continue to rule. They are the ones who have the lion's share in terms of the turnover. But what is particularly interesting is contemporary art is clearly on the rise. If you consider what happened between financial year 21 to financial year 22, it doubled. It, the turnover went up from 21 crores to, to 42 crores uh, over the course of just one year, which again speaks of the fact that, I mean, if I see a lot of young people sitting in the room putting a sort of cricket match aside and saying, let's go and learn a little about art, that's an indicator. You know, that there is interest, there is willingness and want. Uh, the Art Basel report, which is an authoritative report that, uh, that, that comes out everywhere, um, according to that, millennials are the ones who are really coming in and spending big money. They are not shy and most of these people are in the more sort of established, mature western markets. So they are comfortable spend, spending 6 to 10 million dollars on a picture because they have seen their father and mother spend 80 million dollars on a painting. So for them it's not daunting as such. They are also taking what would be regarded as baby steps. For us baby steps would probably be 5 to 25 lakhs because if at all we have reference of you know, someone spending 2 crores on an artwork. But this is again a matter of a generational shift. You know, you'll see this sort of come to comfort as we proceed. The art dealers, some of you all may be in touch with art dealers or advisors like us. The primary demographic, mainly because of the art being represented, is 40 to 64 there. So the senior painters would usually go and rest in such collections, but contemporary collectors will always buy art that comes from the lower bracket. What's a very welcome development is there's a very clear gender shift. Earlier, you know, the ladies of the house may have been taking the decisions, but the checks were signed by the, by the man of the house. That's changing now. Ladies are signing checks and buying for themselves, which is, which is something that's been evidenced in uh, not only a survey that we did, but also the Art Basel report. The current perspective on, on preference is changing as we are seeing a very wide range of new patrons who are sort of looking at immersing themselves in all kinds of media and material. You know, it's no longer just about a canvas, it's about how you can get inventive with media, how you can try uh, uh, different sizes, different scales, outdoor, indoor, video. Um, and the demographic of buyers is sort of also very, very quickly, sh you know, sort of sh changing, changing form. Disposable income has increased and online sales have exploded. So there's a very, very clear indication again of technology being part of the ent enterprise. The pandemic was you know, clearly something that supported this entire move. Technology would not have taken the sort of front seat had it not been for us being locked in for the period that we were. And traditional boundaries that existed. I mean, I know, I know an art gallery that's set up on Instagram that sells very successfully only through Instagram. They don't need to have a physical space anymore simply because people are very comfortable making those trade decisions basis an image that they see, which would never have been possible earlier. Now, Coming to the world that you're going to immerse yourself in, let's speak specifically of the contemporaries. If you look at the market f over the past two decades for the, for, the, for the contemporaries, the turnover went up from 17 lakhs to 42 crores. The number of works exploded from 21 to 1,200. The number of artists, so as you see the playing field, literally sort of uh, 
goes goes skyward it goes from 16 to 405 and the average price goes up from about 80 or 1000 rupees to three and a half lakhs so overall there's there's a, there's, a, there's a fair amount of movement there i'm going to talk about what went wrong with the contemporary market now a number of mistakes were made when money started entering the market and this is something that you all need to be a little guarded about when you all make these sort of um, you know purchase decisions in particular so as you can see the contemporary market and this is specifically only contemporary numbers up until 2005 there's almost no movement uh, what happens between five and six is there's the emergence of the art fund art funds were similar to any capital fund where bankers get together and they uh, uh, they're able to bring investors to the table uh, who look at an asset class and park money on the basis of a return that's promised to them now in the Indian art markets case several mistakes were made art funds which carried a token of about 300 to 400 crores were raised the first big mistake that was made was there was no engagement whatsoever on part of these bankers to educate the buyers so they were complete uninitiates all they were interested in was the 100 to 150 percent returns that they were promised uh, once the fund concluded the second mistake was these funds were given the charge I mean the charge for running these funds was given to galleries auction houses and dealers many of whom had inventories and storerooms full of art so the first thing that they did was they went and they sold whatever was lying in their back room at exorbitant prices so you see price points skyrocketing I mean I'm I'm holding the next click just to sort of make an impact and the third big mistake was the holding period was only three years there is no way even in the most sexiest of market conditions that you'll see a return in three years on an artwork unless you're just very fortunate or you're playing a Ponzi so as you see it skyrockets and this is all because there was money that had to be spent this was this was art fund money that came in that had to be deployed in anywhere between 12 to 15 months but what happened was anyone sitting on the outside who's not part of the art fund market who would not sort of uh, you know become an investor and that said I need to be part of this as well so fools rushed in even further you know they came in saying if this is happening I don't want to miss out on this gold rush I'm going to be part of it absolutely thank you Srivats FOMO so so what you have is an all-time high followed by an unfortunate all-time low and uh, the spike that you see in 11 was actually highly distressed sales positions these are works that were selling for ridiculously low sums when considered in context with what they were acquired at the moral of the story really is for you to remember that if you're going to come in with just finance as your driver you're going to go wrong the good part is we're sitting you know within the vicinity of some of the strongest galleries and they're showing what is their most promising talent you're going to get a chance to immerse yourself in uh, a, a, a really great starter kit if you all are uninitiated right now with what one should collect now if you see what happens after it becomes even more interesting the numbers are completely plateauing. the numbers are going nowhere right now but you start seeing a lot of trade interest there are a lot of people coming in to buy and this is referencing the amount of attention uh, contemporary art is getting now there's a lot of movement collectors are saying listen this is art that's of our time we connect with it we relate to it we must uh, uh, have some of it at home and that's very clearly sort of coming through in the number so the yellow line refers to the number of works sold and what's gratifying at some level is if you look at the latest financial year the turnover also has now reached a respectable sum which actually mirrors that of 2006 when the market was beginning to peak so hopefully the journey forward over the next decade will involve tremendous growth but for all the right reasons uh, to talk of to talk of the numbers again if you look at between 21 and 22 the turnover as well as the the stock that was traded doubles which is again just to reinforce and further sort of illustrate the fact that contemporary art is here to stay it's not a blip in the uh, on the radar and this again is something that is that is quite fascinating if you look at these are price tiers the first one is the tier one is artworks that were priced between one and five crores there are only seven pictures that sold in that bracket but if you look at if you look at the last slab that is pictures priced under five lakh rupees that is where you've got the highest amount of action in energy 2500 works I mean to be precise it is 2478 works sold in the last financial year in just that one category which is indicative of you know first steps a number of new entrants are coming into the market they're looking at buying and supporting what are the things that you should keep in mind now this is just a general primer you know most of the galleries who you'll meet here will tell you much the same but we've just tried to compile some of these thoughts for you it should if it is treated as an investment at all 
it should be long term. You know, let's not look at three year or five year or silly sort of timelines. Liquidity could certainly be a concern. I would, I would go to the extent of saying that 90% of all art ever sold will never find a taker again. So if you are thinking about investment at any level, just make sure that you're, you're buying someone who has liquidity uh, built in. And with contemporary art, someone who's super hot today could be a name that's forgotten in 10 years from now. So you really will need to diversify, sort of spread your, 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 your fruits around different baskets. There's several incidental costs. There's insurance, there's storage, maintenance is another one, you know, valuation costs. Then there are brokers who are involved in the deals. There's a dealer in auction house. There could be a fund manager. In the ideal scenario, as an investment, art should always be a mix, much like a portfolio is a mix of several uh, classes. Over here, we typically ask people to look at a, a, a balance of anywhere between 60% to 70% for moderns, about 20% for the pre-moderns and the remainder for contemporaries. So that's now shifting in favor of the contemporaries, which again is a very good sign. It's very important to own your own standing as you get involved in this domain, start doing your own research. Read a little, and it'll happen very organically because it is something that is very welcoming. Um, timing, I mean, if you are looking at liquidating an asset, the timing is very important. Um, you know, in the, in, the, in the weeks leading up to an auction, there's a lot of buzz around it. Private sales happen um, typically after an auction concludes because people who haven't managed to win a work at auction are still sitting with funds and want to buy. So that timing and the detail of where you sell it and through whom you sell it makes a very, very big difference. I'm going to uh, conclude with an interesting slide, which again talks about opportunity, uh, which is available. We are sitting in what are very uncertain times. Inflation is at a sky high, and you know the, the tech industry is firing people by the by the thousands every day. You're reading a lot of very alarming things. So, is this the time to be looking at the art market at all, even from a general buyer's perspective? I'd, I'd like to start by showing you what happened during the first day. You've already seen references of this. Now, the, 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 the crimson refers to the modern stock for those of you all who can't read. The yellow is contemporary. As you can see, in 2008, contemporary had become the most powerful category. Everyone was buying contemporary art uh, simply because they felt contemporary art was, you know, uh, God's gold. This particular picture by Subodh sold for 5.7 crores. This is the most expensive price that's been achieved by Subodh at auction. A picture by TV Santor sold for 2.8 crores that same year. What followed was a crumpling of the market, the global recession. Uh, and there was a wipeout of, in particular, the contemporary market. Modern was still trading, but contemporaries were wiped out because the drivers were these kind of bleeding figures, which were not merited in the first place. Um, you know, and that, that was sort of substantiated in some part by the kind of prices that were achieved. 2011, a picture of the same size by Subodh sold for 72 lakhs. So there was, a, there was a drastic drop. There was still liquidity. So the good part is you could still liquidate the asset, but you could achieve nowhere close to within the vicinity of what was achieved. Uh, uh, a similar picture by TV Santosh failed to sell. But also there were seats of opportunity. So if you look at this particular picture, which came up in late 2009, this is a work by Gaitonde that sold for 2.8 crores. This particular picture, which is not very clear, this is a Ram Kumar, uh, which failed to sell at auction. It was sold post auction for uh, 14 and a half lakhs. And this is a monumental painting by uh, Hussein, a very celebrated picture that was shown at the Sao Paulo Biennale in the 1960s. This sold for 2.6 crores. As we know, the markets then picked up. You know, there was a little more energy that sort of uh, came to revitalize the market. The picture that sold for about 17 lakhs by, uh, by Ram Kumar sold within about three odd years for 50 lakhs. The picture by Hussein, which sold for 2.6 crores in a matter of five and a half, in about four and a half years, sold for 10.6 crores. And the picture by Gaitonde, which sold for 2.8, went on to sell for 15.4 crores. So if you consider what's happened here, there was opportunity that came along at an opportune time and people bought it. The reference that I'd like to draw for all your attention is the art that you're seeing right now will someday be regarded as the works of moderns. These artists were the, were, the, were the contemporaries in the 1960s. You know, people could have looked at a Ravi Verma and said, no, I'm Ravi Verma, he lunga. But contemporary art is where fortunes are built as long as the window uh, of, of holding is long enough. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, that was my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them for you.
It depends entirely. There are, you know, one would say, pardon me? It depends on the artist and who, so you know, it comes down to a set of what I refer to as the supers. There's a super gallerist, there's a super collector, there's a super curator. If the mandate of these three are aligned, so if, if it's a super gallery that's representing the artist, if this is an artist who's, let's say, part of these powerful galleries, like much like the galleries that are, that are you know, displaying art here, that's already a sign of being in a strong circle. If this artist, let's say, get, gets collected by an important collector, that automatically gives them a few notches higher. So now, what you need to do is, and then of course, like in the Indian context, it's not as strong, but in the global context, if let's say a MoMA or a Guggenheim decides to show your work as a young painter, you skyrocket. It's happened with some of our senior painters. We've seen the value of Gaitonde skyrocket immediately after his Guggenheim show. We've seen that happen to Nasreen. We've seen that happen to senior painters. But in the Western world, several young artists who are still in their 40s and 50s get showcased because a curator of an important museum will showcase their work. And in the immediate aftermath of that, you see the prices literally go sky high. The key is really to understand if this is an investment for you, follow these cues, follow these markers. Um, at the cost of insider trading, build relationships with uh, galleries and, and museum operators. They'll give you an insight into what's happening over the next you know, calendar year. That allows you to then make a call. To conclusively give you a position, I think India is still uh, what I refer to as art on the horizon. You know, over the next 20 years, you're going to see tremendous growth, even further so. Uh, and it's, you know, it's next door to you. So I think it's simpler for you to just take those few steps. You can't invest in an upcoming artist. I, I, just, I just think the usage of the term is incorrect. You can invest in a senior painter because there's enough merit uh, to establish that your money is safe. Pardon me? Um, no, we'll exchange sort of notes on names later. I, you know, public forum, it's a little tricky to speak of artists. But, uh, but when it comes to an established name, you can take a chance without, uh, without too much of worry. You know what you're doing. You know, so if you talk about a Tayyab or a Hussain or a Gaitonde, there are basically about 60 artists for whom we have seen tremendous movement. I would go so far as to say that at least 30 of them are too big to beat now. They're not going anywhere but north as long as you're buying an authentic work at the right price. Um, with Emerging artists, there's just no telling, you know, a messy divorce, um, hitting the bottle, deciding ki nahi yaar, I want to become a sadhu, you know, anything could happen over the next 10 years. Going from a very promising talent to a complete nobody in the art world could happen. So when you buy contemporary art, especially emerging art, just buy it because you love it. Price points are anyway nothing, you know, in that sense. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Your provenance is already established. It's been in your family, so you know where it's coming from. <laughs> okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, this is an artwork for which the antecedents aren't proven. You don't know whether this is in fact authentic or not. But the world will not agree with your claim. Okay, let me. Let me, let me sort of narrate a very quick story. I know the, there's, you know, Ishan's food waiting for us and I don't want to sort of hold your back, but very quickly. Uh, the most expensive picture that ever sold was a picture by Leonardo da Vinci that sold for $450 million. We all know about this. But if you go back 20 years, in fact, if you go back 90 years, it sold at an estate auction for 80 pounds, where it was sold as a work by Boltfario, who was an apprentice of Leonardo. Nobody knew it. It then changed about seven or eight hands, finally shows up at another estate sale in Minneapolis where it sells for $12,000 but is picked up by an art dealer who thinks he knows what he's buying into. So they think he's making some kind of a silly goof when he says I'll pay 12,000 bucks for it. But what he does is he spends the next 11 years getting the sanction and approval of every important expert in the business on his side. Some disagree. But he gets an overwhelming majority to champion his cause, saying this is not a Boltfario, this is in fact a Leonardo. And in doing so, it goes from $12,000 to $142 million. 
That happens in 11 years. So ma'am, to your question, I think what you need to do is find the right experts, get them behind you. You, you, need to, you need to have the voice of those that matter. It comes down to that. At this point, you know, we're speaking of a very prickly topic. Authenticity is a very big concern. There are several pictures that come uh, either without any provenance, any paperwork. They, if they show up at auction, they get the sanction, they get the approval. That does not necessarily mean the work's authentic. It's made it to auction, which allows it to be published and sell. So maybe that's the answer. Maybe you need to get the auction house guys to take interest. But well, it's a small price to pay if it's gone up by 6,000%, right? So I think, I think that's what you need to look at. Right. Great question. There are several things that are going on. See, we, we're living in the time of NFTs, blockchain. There's a lot of very exciting uh, uh, development underway in that direction. Um, you know, there are companies that are fractionalizing art, which, which go by the very simple premise of democratizing it. A picture by Picasso, which will cost you $120 million, can suddenly, as instead of finding only two potential suitors, you know, have 300,000 people who buy portions of it. But it's, it's very early days, you know, there's a, there's a certain want by way of prestige of having that Picasso hang in your living room and that's what allows for the value to further rise. You know, when you fractionalize it, the sexiness of owning it and showing it, that's diluted. Will this take on sort of uh, market interest? Will it become something huge? Will it become something that, you know, we start trading and actively like we do with, let's say, Birla or Tata? I'm not sure. But, uh, but all of these mechanisms are available to us. You know, five years ago, that was not the case. So we are moving in the right direction. I think it's premature to sort of take a call on as to whether this is going to find favor in the market and whether it will continue to contribute to the rise of the numbers. Um, very quickly, the point I would like to make here is it's usually when two extremely wealthy individuals get into loggerheads over owning an asset that you see the price rise. The moment you democratize the base, and you say it's boys from Saroji Nagar who own the art. No, no disrespect meant to Saroji Nagar. Um, you're suddenly debasing it. So will it continue to find favor and see the market rise? That I'm unsure of. But I'm all for art being democratized. I think it's very important. And we're taking a good step in that direction by you know, having weekends such as this. Uh, sorry, you, you were asking a, an entry to that? I, I, I'll come up and say hi to you in person. I'll, I'll step up there. Uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Right. I personally am a naysayer. I'm all for technology. I think technology is something that um, has to be embraced. It is the way forward. There are no two ways around it. But right now we're going through what I refer to as the gimmickry phase of, of, of art. It's not understood. No one really knows what will be made of it. NFT is not know what they're doing. Artists don't know what they're doing, but NFT is So I attended a, a, a watch event in, in Geneva. This was, this, was, this was where IWC was releasing its new watches. And, um, and they released an NFT watch. Now what that means, even they don't know. They're on the stage making a presentation, ki, buy your NFT watch, but what do I do with it? I'm buying a real watch, right? So nobody really knows. We're going through a phase where we're going to be playing, you know, it's, it's a dark room. We're just trying to sort of figure out and understand our way. Give it, give it, I would say five to 10 years. If you want to get invested, uh, you know, like I know, I know friends of mine went in and bought portions of the board ape. They paid ridiculous amounts. And they'll still have a smile when I talk about it, but they've lost money. They've lost tremendous amounts of money. Now, if the biggest in the world, and I'm talking of the biggest collectors in the world who are supporting the board ape, and you know, I'm talking of the sexy corner of the room, the Jay-Zs, the Beyonces of the world, who really make the rest of the community sort of step up, if they have not managed to turn it yet, I don't know how much promise it holds. But 10 years hence, once the market has clarified itself, I think there will be a lot uh, that uh, will, will be mandated as a must-do in that direction. Yes, sir. So you give some outliers of CAGRs of yes. years. Yes. Is there like a is there an average of these auction works that what is the sort of compound return that over So if you look at the you know those thirty artists who we are saying are too big to beat now, uh, 
you're looking at about 24 to 28 percent. 24 to 28. Yes, for 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 that bracket, but there your entry buy-ins are very high now. You know your your entry level is at about 75 lakhs to about a crore and 25. That's your entry, and it goes upwards. You know anywhere between 5 to 15 crores for an important picture where you know you'll see year on year growth of 20 percent. But you know there are very few takers for that market. So contemporary art is a great place to start. Spread it out. You know, the only point I'd make is every year set aside a budget that's very comfortable to you uh, and think about your grandchild. Uh, just say that you're comfortable spending 5 lakhs every year, you know, and do this every year for the next 15 years. Trust me when I say this, 90% will go nowhere, but 10 will hit, 10 will hit it out of the park. And that's, that's really where fortunes are built, right? But along the way, you would have enjoyed uh, a very, very beautiful part of life. You know, most of us end up staring at stuff that interior decorators have put in our homes. Change that equation, get involved, you know, ask questions, ask what works for you, what doesn't. We'll try and unravel some of these questions while we do our walkthrough, but, uh, but yeah, to, uh, to, your, to your question, it's about 24 to 28 percent, that's the average. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Arvin, for the uh, a pleasure. Uh, just uh, lovely time that we've had. Before we wrap up, actually, we, we, we have a few announcements and we'd like you to be a part of some of these announcements. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, this year when we started the year, one of the needs that came out in the annual survey was that we as a chapter wanted to learn a little bit about personal growth and the art and the culture. And uh, this is a platform that we came up with in collaboration with the MyEO team. Uh, and in fact, art is something we've been trying to launch a MyEO around for a long time, but we haven't been able to possibly because the last MyEO share, Legarda. But luckily, the MyEO share this year is fantastic and uh, introducing Gautam, the MyEO chair, and congratulations for launching the MyEO. <laughs> Said what Smith said, and as uh, uh, part of you know, as a board, we've been wanting to give a more 360 experience, and I think a big missing part was creative expression, which I think has found. Uh, you know, I think individually, a lot of us are doing a bunch of stuff. So I, uh, I'm really grateful for my please come for uh, taking the lead because you know what, 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 what we try to do. My own, you need a leader, you need a champion, and, and she's got a lot of fun stuff planned. So would you mind? Thank you so much. So thank you for that very generous introduction, Gautam. And thank you so much for this talk. I no, it's really, really it was a pleasure. It. it was like going back to art school. But uh, I'm so excited to launch My You Art. We're inspired by the 360, so it's about learning about art, maybe some more gallery walkthroughs, going to museums, heritage sites, learning about our, uh, making art, so learning about our, and making our own art. And uh, yeah, having a lot of fun in general. So I hope everybody has a lot of event ideas, and you will all come for all the events, and we'll have some fun. I'll request uh, Nimesh to present a small token of our appreciation to Arvind. There's no need for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so thank, much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, very insightful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you so much, Arvind. It's, uh, it's been uh, a real pleasure uh, hearing you. And uh, for me, it was uh, frankly. Uh, first time I was actually understanding art in a different way. Sure. Uh, till now for me art is what my daughter paints. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so thank you so much and this, is, uh, this has been a great experience uh, being here at this uh, very historical venue. Yes. Uh, and uh, also, you know, uh, we've, we've been tr really trying within the chapter to diversify like they already mentioned in terms of what kind of learning we want to uh, get on to and I think this is a great start and uh, I'm sure not the first but uh, many many of the first of many so thank you so much. Sir. It's it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you everyone for joining thank us you. here and we head for the tour.